Assalamu alaikum. I referred to skepticism in the previous lecture and wanted to take a few moments to explain this concept better. It is one of the underlying themes in this course and for all future courses. Skepticism is questioning things that are accepted as true. Now philosophical skepticism questions our ability to know anything. So don't get confused, that's not what we're referring to here. We're encouraging young Muslims to not absorb all the insults that they hear about their faith, but rather to take a step back and try to understand where they're coming from and what the underlying assumptions are. It is common for believers today to have a crisis of faith. A typical Muslim teenager, for example, may wonder why Muslims are always portrayed as violent in the media. What the war on terror is all about. Are jihad and Sharia really the oppressive and inhumane concepts that they are depicted to be? Also, do Muslim women have to cover up? Do they have to wear the hijab? Other teenagers are dating, so why can't we? And most critically, how do we know that God exists? Is the Quran really from God? And how can we believe that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is really a prophet when he did this and that or the other? You can see how this can be an issue. Skepticism, originally, was a tool used against religious beliefs. By philosophers and atheists, people of, of faith were bombarded with questions, many of which they had trouble answering, until they either left their faith entirely or accepted that their faith was merely spiritual, emotional, or personal, lacking any intellectual basis or objective truth. This tool can be used against any ideology though, and we encourage Muslims to be critical of the questions coming our way. Don't just accept things at face value. What are the underlying assumptions? Are there ulterior motives? Learning more about Islam from its sources, of course, and where the questions are coming from will greatly increase the chance that your faith will be deeper rooted and intellectually sound. Consider this, today due to the media, entertainment industry and our own personal experiences, we are able to recognize Christian missionaries or Bible thumpers, which is a term that I wouldn't use, it's derogatory, but we know that these people are actively preaching Christianity and part of their work is to find holes in Islam, atheism, polytheism, etc. It's mostly overt and it's expected, it's understood, we get it. The thing is, liberals and atheists do the very same thing. But it's many times under the guise of free speech, critical thinking, rationality, reason, logic, science, and who doesn't love science? Personalities like Bill Maher, Richard Dawkins, and Sam Harris, just to name a few, present themselves as objective, rational thinkers, experts. They are neutral. It's just that studying a particular subject, such as Islamic theology, or maybe the modern Middle East, has brought them to the conclusion that Islam is a cancer. Muslims must be eradicated. Give me a break. They are simply missionaries for their cause, proselytizing liberalism instead of Christianity. And Muslims need to know this. Be skeptical of the notion that science has all the answers. Really? We have proof that God doesn't exist. Come on. Islam is the source of evil in the world. How insightful. Tell me more. I think you get the idea. What we need to do is first recognize that many of these questions have a whole background behind them. They don't come out of a vacuum. Rather, there are multiple and sometimes complex underlying assumptions. Our goal isn't to always resolve these issues, but sometimes to dissolve them. They didn't exist in the minds of Muslims a generation ago, much less centuries ago. And that's because they are almost nothing to do with Islam and almost everything to do with the modernist dogmas, the ideologies circling around today. So we are encouraging the use of rational arguments to topple the ideas of false, the idols of false ideologies, so that people can see the truth more clearly. The Quranic story of the Prophet Abraham, peace and blessings be upon him, teaches us just that. Ibrahim salam criticized the idols that his people worshipped by pointing to the fact that they were made of wood and stone. They could not see, they could not hear, they couldn't think, they couldn't help us in any way. Also the moon, the stars, the sun, they were beautiful, they were majestic when they were in the sky. But then they said, none of them could really be God. You see, he flipped the tables around. And Islamic history is full of scholars who are intellectual giants and strong skeptics of other philosophies and other worldviews. In the hostile climate that we find ourselves in today, we need to revive this tradition. More on this soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.